Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. So today what I wanted to do is I wanted to demonstrate this thing called Calyx OS that I'm running on a Pixel 4a 5G that I got to replace my old dying Samsung S10. -E. I wanted to try one of these degoogled Android things and I thought this was a pretty cool place to start. So this is called Calyx OS. This is a degoogled Android open source project fork with a focus on privacy. So I'm going to include a link down below to this. If you're using an Android phone, there's a lot of studies on this on just how much Android phones home and it's really creepy. What I really creeped me out a long time ago was realizing that, that little microphone button on the keyboard, yeah, Google was saving all of those recordings for 10 years in a transcribable format where I could literally search and find arguments I was having with my ex-girlfriend back in 2010 and download the individual voice recordings. Uh, because, you know, apparently I hit accept somewhere. Like, oh, that's something I would have hit accept to. There were other weird things where I could see that at 3.30 a.m., on Tuesday, the September 1st, 2010, I switched from this app to that app. Or I was listening to this song or this podcast, and I hit pause then, and then five minutes later I hit play. Like, because that's information that's, that Google should just be saving forever. It really, really creeped me out and woke me up to the fact that I should probably be a little bit more, um, more discerning with the operating systems that I use on my phone. So this is Calyx OS, and they, what they try to do is give you your privacy back, but without taking away a lot of the user experience. So for instance, I remember back in the day when I tried one of these, if I tried to do something like take an Uber, that, that just didn't work. There's so much on these devices that relies on Google Play services, Google Maps, Google everything else to run, that when you take all that stuff out, you wind up with a phone that is very, very much so um, useless for a lot of everyday tasks. So what's cool about this is if I want to take an Uber, I, the app actually works, however it's not using Google Maps. So usually when you open Google, Uber on an Android phone, you'll see Google Maps or something like, this is Google in the lower left corner, and here it says Map Box. This is not something that I had to install, this is not something that I had to compile myself, there was no stage one tarball like Gen 2 Linux in 2002. Uh, you know, it just, it just works out of the box, which is pretty cool. And again, I can buy, I can buy the phone from them with this operating system pre-installed, which I like. And now there are some things that I'm, uh, I'm not particularly a fan of that I wanted to go over with it, but I'll save that for later. The stuff that I'm kind of, you know, so the other cool thing is again, you know, you get stuff like the Aurora store nowadays, so you can get the apps that you would get from the Google Play Store, but without having to have Google Play and Google Play services on your phone. So if I want to search for an app, I don't know, like Synonia, it's a game I played like 10 years ago. I do have to wait a while. I am using Verizon here, so I have one bar, which is pretty much all you're good for in most of Texas if you're using Verizon. But as you can see, I can actually download pretty much the same apps that I could download on the Play Store, but without having to deal with, Play, with uh, Google Play services and that level of bullshit. Now there are some things on this that kind of do tick me off from a privacy standpoint, but it's again, they're really not deal breakers. And these are just usability things that I'm sure will get fixed with time. So for instance, let's say I go to use the calendar. Now, one of the things is it says before I can add an event, I have to have a calendar account on my device. I just kind of want to have a local calendar. I don't really want to log into some sort of online cloud thing. If I would, were doing that, I'd just use a Google device. That the whole point of this, I imagine, is to get away from that. Now, let's say I say, okay, fine, I'll add an account because when you cancel, you can't add an event to the calendar. You hit add, add account, and this is where it really kind of falls off, you know, it just kind of goes off the rails. So I don't know what DAVX5 is. No, I've never heard of that in my life. The other thing is plug share. Why is PlugShare even in there? So PlugShare is an app that I installed because it shows you where electrical ve electric vehicle chargers are all throughout the country, which is really useful if you're doing something like taking a cross-country road trip in an electric car. However, what the F does PlugShare have to do with my calendar app? And now when I click that, it prompts me to log in or join the PlugShare community, but again, that, that, that really has nothing to do with a calendar. If I go add account and I hit dav x5, it asks me to log in with an email address or log in with a URL and username or an advanced login. But I don't have a login. I like so usually on a, on a site or a program when it says you have to log in for it to work, there'll usually be a login or new user register. Here there's no new user register, it's just log in, but I don't even know what that is. And again, I could Google to figure out what it is or DuckDuckGo to figure out what it is, but I don't really want to Google or DuckDuckGo to figure it out what it is because I don't want to add an account to use a calendar. It's a local app. 
that's running on here. I shouldn't have to add an account to use a calendar. That just leads me to say, screw that, F this, and um, move on to something else. Again, here I could see dav x5 is um, your data, your device, your control. Um, but, but again, like, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to register in another app. I just want to add something to my local calendar. I don't know. I'm just, the, 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 this is just me. It's a usability thing. The next up is the keyboard. The thing that, that you really lose out on when you decide to leave Google, you lose out on the keyboard. So I'll give you an example here. So I actually installed the Google keyboard, Google board on here, and I'll give you an idea of what it's like when I type. So I'll say something like, the fat black cat jumped over Blackberry because he was mad at her. And as you can see, the autocorrect is pretty on point. Now, I have blocked the Google keyboard in the firewall from being able to go online. So it is not looking up at anything. It is not, I don't have a Google, in my, uh, Google account on this. So there's no way for them to you know, be looking at some sort of database to see what it is I've typed, what it is I've typoed. And again, it doesn't even have access to the internet, which by the way, is another cool thing you could do with this device. You could deny certain applications access to the internet. Now, if I go into my settings and I decide to change the keyboard available, I think it's in the language settings, language and input, something like that. Here we go, go languages and input, keyboards, on-screen keyboards, manage on-screen keyboards. I'm going to disable that, and we're going to put the open Android open source project keyboard that comes with the device on there. I was experimenting with some different keyboards, as you can see here. So we're going to just put back the Android open source keyboard, and I'm going to try to type something very similar and we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to go back to tasks over here and I'll try to type something similar like uh, the fat black cat jumps over the blackberry Be and you can, I'll try that again. As you can see it's like the autocorrect is not exactly as good. Uh, the fat black cat Clinton jumps over Blackberry. You, you can see that again, there is, it, it's not because the keys are really radically spaced out differently. The autocorrect on it is just kind of, it, it leaves something to be desired. And I've actually tried training it uh, a fair considerable amount, but it, it does, it, it just, yeah. I'm not a big fan of typing on almost any of these other Android open source keyboards. I have found that the, the Android open source project keyboard, in my opinion, it feels like I'm going back to an 2000, it feels like I'm going back to 2009 and using a Blackberry Storm 9530. Now, the keyboard that I found that was actually the, one of the best, besides the Google keyboard, very surprisingly so, was actually a Microsoft keyboard. Uh, which which was just not something that I was expecting here. So you know again the Microsoft Swift key keyboard is actually pretty good. I tried that. Again, it is a Microsoft keyboard. So you know, Google, Microsoft, you're just you're not really moving that far over from you know to, to in terms of not nice company. So the well, let me try that again. The fat black cat jumped over Blackberry because he was mad. Okay, I got, I got one wrong, far, far fat. So the Microsoft keyboard actually did a good amount better. Now again, one of the cool things about this device is you actually, you can download the Google keyboard, but then go over here to firewall and tell the Google keyboard, uh, you know, F you, you know, you can't connect to the internet. So over here, now you have disabled the Google keyboard's ability to connect to the internet, which is pretty cool. Because again, you know, even if you, you think, okay, well, I don't want to use something Google because it's going to phone home, you can have the benefit of the Google keyboard and then stop it from phoning home, which is, you know, something that, that I like. And obviously, if you do that, you lose the ability to use the voice to text functionality. But for the most part, I'm, I don't really use that much anymore anyway. So I usually just disable its ability to phone home. And uh, you know, I actually turned it on for this video because I was going to do a demonstration of the voice to text, but there's no real point to that. But otherwise, this is pretty cool. I'm, I'm able to do everything with this device that I normally do with my device. When it comes to Gmail, I've just decided any Gmail accounts that I had, I just decided to start accessing them via IMAP and I'm using K9 Mail for that, which I use from a lot of my work email anyway. The one issue that I'm having in terms of trying to get away from Google are apps for doing live streams to YouTube. Streamlabs is a complete buggy pile of shit. It works horribly. The notifications on it are bad or it places chat on the screen. 
is bad. It's just, it's just a bad app all around. And honestly, it's kind of a bad company that makes it. You, I have some could argue worse than Google. So I do have uh, the YouTube app on there, which yeah, I'm, I'm really looking for an alternative. So if anybody knows something that is decent at doing live streams to a YouTube channel that is not the YouTube app, I'm, I'm open to it. But I, so far, I like this thing. It's a pretty nice device. And uh, I, I like that I'm one step away from you know Google seeing everything that I do, watching everything that I do, collecting data on everything that I do. I, I'm trying to slowly get the, um, the, the, the ex those people out of our life. And now, now, I hope that this project does get better over time. I do think it's pretty cool. It does have a decent development team. And uh, I am, one of the things that I'm, I, I hope helps this particular project get better over time is um, we gave them a grant recently of a, of a sizable chunk of money and if they actually you know wind up doing good work with this which i believe they will most likely my boss will be happy to continue to give them grants into the future for this type of development and one of the things that we were actually thinking of and talking about over at fudo was doing something along the lines of making a list of all the things that make open s these these projects suck like just going over the things that's going to cause a normal average everyday user to go fuck that and pick up their stock operating system going over the things that suck whether it's the keyboard or whether it's the calendar app or anything like that and then creating these sort of bounties that if if you are able to fix this particular thing you get this particular pot of money and I, this, is a, this is something that we have to work out and I'm talking with a couple of PhDs in computer science on what the best way to be, would be to try and organize something like that. It's in its very early stages. Rather than, you know, in addition to giving money to the people that are doing the projects, it would also be really cool to be able to find specific things that suck and then try that with that I know are probably going to tick users off and then, you know, try to target money towards those specific things that suck to try to make them better which is something that is well hopefully something that we're able to make happen in the in the near future oh there's some other cool features of this i should show you so again now i know that the real you know the real tinfoil hat people are going to go well this is bullshit but you have this little thing over here for mic access and camera access so when you click that the device supposedly will not give the the, the hardware access to the microphone or the camera. Now again, I know that the type of person that wants this type of feature is probably the type of person that's going to say, I still don't fucking trust it. I'm opening my phone and soldering that shit out of there because, you know, who knows? Maybe the, the Qualcomm chip has a hard line to the microphone and the camera and not dealing with the operating system. I don't really know if that's the case, but it's nice to have those little things there. I noticed when I have those things checked, applications that require the camera or the microphone will not work. So at the very least, uh, you know, the, those applications can't sneak past me and get access to my camera or my microphone. So if you're one of those people that has said, oh, you know, I, I was sitting next to my phone and I noticed after sitting next to my phone and just repeating fireplace over and over and over again that I started to see advertisements for Yule Logs, then you're probably the, the target customer for this type of feature where you could turn off mic access and camera access. And again, in terms of, you know, the, the NSA or the CIA remotely turning on your microphone, I don't know if that'll fix that. But at the very least, when it comes to just dumb apps that are probably, that are, you know, spying on you and shit like that or keeping the microphone on it seems to do a good job of keeping that away because those apps won't work and they will tell you you know you, you need to unblock the camera or the microphone for this to work which is some pretty cool features uh, th that's about it for today hopefully you found this to be somewhat informative and i hope that some of you check out some of these android open source projects again to be clear these are 100 percent free so if you want to try this thing out on your phone uh, the only thing that it's going to cost you is your time and if your time is valuable to you, uh, if the Calyx Institute does provide these phones with the operating system pre-installed, you got to pay for it. But I paid for it before I actually, before we made the grant to Calyx Institute just to check it out, see how the thing was. And, you know, it wasn't that bad. And I hope these things are able to get better with time as they gather more development, more resources. And, you know, again, hopefully my boss is not the only one out there that is looking to give money to these types of projects to make things better. You know, if there, if there was a, a hundred people like him out there, I'm sure that there'd be a lot more resources to go around and make these things better. You know, the real goal would be to have something like, you know, 15 million users 
that were used to be Android users using stuff like this because it doesn't suck. And I think it starts with informing people on just how much their device is controlling them, tracking them, you know, making them the product rather than the customer, and uh, then presenting them with an alternative that doesn't suck. So that's it for tonight. As always, hope you learned something. We'll see you all in the next video.